to me, it's a broader effort than a single study. Uh, the characteristic of design um, within design research, I think there's a lot of emphasis on research and um, grounding your theoretical propositions and a more sort of qualitative lens that's being used um, as well as sort of mixed methodologies that are starting to emerge in the design research we're seeing. But I feel as if we're, we are not focusing as much on the design part of that design research. So for me, a lot of it is um, wrapped around the many decisions that happen in design um, that basically can take you in one direction, one theoretical direction or another. There are thousands of decisions that are made um, in design about interface, about usability, about you know a conceptual design and brainstorming and the reason that you basically choose one path in design versus another. That all has implications theoretically and then, and then implications empirically. So um, I, I believe that we need to really focus on the nature of design to fully get a handle on this process. And we need to provide not only better warrant for our theoretical propositions, but better warrant for why we chose to design something in the manner that we did. And if you think about that in the context, you've done design, in the context of how many decisions you made at that point and what you based those decisions on, they're not always purely theoretically based. You know, design is a wild ride. It is a, um, it's a very ill-structured, it's a, it's a problem-solving process, it's one of the highest levels of, of problem-solving. And, and you end up um, doing a lot of you know, on the fly decision making. And so there's a, there's definitely, um, someone referred to it as uh, wicked. The process is wicked. I love that. You know, it's a, a wicked problem solving in a, in a sense because there's so much going on. So we need to kind of harness the, and under, better understand the process of design to better understand the process of design research in order to give warrant and credibility. Um, uh, for what we're doing, for the decisions we're making, and then the indications of those decisions on uh, on teaching and learning, if, if that makes sense. So for me, it's raising all types of issues related to educational research, which I think is a good conversation to have. I think it's fantastic for the field. And the nature of design is kind of what, uh, what I'm saying, because you know, and some of the instruments or some of the interventions that, that I design collaboratively with my graduate students who are phenomenal designers, uh, you know, in a, in a, on a daily basis, we'll make so many decisions and trying to not only uh, kind of track that decision making, but understand that the implications of the decision we're making theoretically and the influence of those decisions. Now we can't do it for every single decision, but I think we need to be more conscious of the embodiment of the theories and the ideas and the assumptions that we're making, and then the design decisions, how we're operationalizing those things in design, and the design decisions we're making then have an influence on the teaching and learning outcomes. And we need to get clear across all of that clearer, perhaps, um, because right now, in, in my view, it's kind of a black box. You know, we, we talk about, I came in with these theoretical propositions, and I designed to them, and magically learning happened. But there's a, there's a lot more in that cycle, in those iterative processes, and it's that, that sense of clarity that I'm trying to improve in my own work of, you know, how, it, when I go back and do sort of a retrospective analysis of, of my experience in design research, for what it's worth, because we're all still trying to figure out what this thing is, I go back and I try to analyze, okay, well, where were the key decisions that happened here in design, and what prompted them? And one thing that prompted them was, um, uh, uh, in my current cycle that we're working on now, uh, was a, a teacher basically uh, saying, in earth science learning, she can't get her kids to see geological phenomenon. And she kept talking about that, how, you know, I have urban kids and I take them out into the field and, you know, they just don't see nature. They just don't see the changes that happen in nature. And we need to help get them to see that one thing totally turned our design and totally turned us towards 
trying to elicit observational inquiry and, and in geomorphology. Um, and so when I go back and retrace my steps in this current cycle, that's going to be a key catalyst, a key decision in our design direction that influenced my theory, my theory, that influenced my assumptions, that influenced the literature that I looked at, that influenced how, where we went from that process. And so that road that I, we chose to take has implications theoretically and empirically is kind of what I'm saying. So design is fundamental to this process, but somehow it's being overlooked. I feel like a lot of the studies that I read are more, you know, many of them earlier on are more, more qualitative in nature. They were more sort of a narrative analysis or a narrative report of, of, um, of a, the creation of a design research tool. And I think that's valuable, uh, certainly. But um, it, it, the, sort of what I get from those studies are a lot of more um, kind of a, a, using a qualitative lens. You know, they, they all read as strong qualitative studies. But what they don't characterize is, as well as I'd like them to, is kind of those key points of design decision making that happen, that influence why you chose to do something in the way that you did. And then that may inform, perhaps, why learning you know, is happening. At least it'll better inform that, if that makes sense. So making a connection between the design decisions and the learning outcomes, I guess, is what, I, is what I'm getting at. And, um, sometimes I don't see that so clearly in a lot of a lot of the um, studies that I'm reading in design research. It's kind of you know it's a very qualitative lens. It's the theoretical propositions are the most important thing, and, and they are important. But how you get to theoretical propositions is influenced by your design and your design activities. Well, I think I think to as I said that, um, and certainly are integrated. I mean, everyone talks that, but we, we need to sort of, we need to better trace what, ha what has happened in, in design research cycles. Um, I think that's a beginning, that's a start, you know, to maybe retrospectively analyze, you know, where were the key decisions and what happened here, and, and even, uh, you know, we, we learned this in our, in our data analysis, we collected some data, we analyzed it, we learned this, then we made this resulting decision, okay? Um, now, that worked or didn't work, depending on how we interpret that. I mean, there's a lot of grays in there too. <laughs> you know, it's more than working or not working. But, uh, but you get sort of the broad picture. So I think that if we can trace that process, Everett Rogers talks about tracing studies and diffusion and innovation. And I think we need kind of some tracing of, in, in that context of sort of design decision making, uh, what happens.